So in the last few months, I collaborated with Vox Glitch on the ARPSEC. It's an arpeggiator module that you can use to arpeggiate chords. You can use this as a complex sequencer and even to sequence drums together with the note detector module that we also worked on. It has four built-in sequences for gate length, transposition, and two modulation sequencers, each with its own length, probability per step, cycles per step, and more unique features. Both of the modules are available for free, and in this video I would like to show you a few interesting things you can do with the ARPSEC, and then quickly show you the concept behind the note detector. And we will start with the basic functionality. Okay, so the basic way an arpeggiator works is it will take a chord and it will play the notes of the chord one after the other, and depending on the arpeggiator, you might be able to play the notes in a different order. So let's really start with the most basic function of the ARPSEC, which is really arpeggiating chords. So first of all, I will use my MIDI keyboard in this case, but we will also use a sequencer soon enough. So the pitch for my keyboard will go to the pitch of the ARP sec, right? Also the gate, of course, I have here polyphony set so I can play chords. We will also need the clock to tell the ARP sec at which rate to arpeggiate the notes. So in this case, I have here the clock from impromptu. And now the voice that I will use to play these notes is kick all from Befaco, right? So I will connect the pitch to the pitch input of uh, kick all and the gates to gate or to trigger this voice. And now as soon as I hold the chord on my keyboard and as long as I hold it, the notes will arpeggiate. I can also turn on latch so the notes will keep playing without me holding the keys. Maybe you will see this better here. Right, now I can let go. You see I'm not holding any notes and it's still arpeggiating this chord. Right, I can also change the chord now. Right, and if I hold one note, I can add more notes to it until I let go. So if I hold C, for example, now I can start adding notes. Right, and now it will arpeggiate this chord. Now I can also change the rate of the clock on the ARP sec itself. So now it's multiplied by one, which is the original clock. I can divide this, right? And I can also multiply it, of course, with a CV input and a dedicated attenuverter. Right, I can also change the play direction of the notes. So now it's set to manual, which means it will play the notes in the order I enter them. Right, but we can set this, of course, to all the usual shapes like forward, reverse, right, pendulum, and even random. And then we have also twice, uh, twice the notes, so it will play each note twice. So let's really see this with a sequencer. Here I have progress from Hampton harmonics. This will generate a chord progression. So again, I will use the pitch. I will send this to the pitch input of the ARP sec. And now I can either use a gate to have the notes playing only when this gate is high. Right, just like this. Or I can activate the on function, which will internally open a gate. So the notes will always be arpeggiated there is no need for a gate. Right, this is very useful when using a sequencer. Now, this is where this module stops being yet another arpeggiator and starts being a complex sequencing playground. So let's dig deeper. Okay, so here I have chords coming from the note sequencer from JW, and the voice I'm using here is the modern VCO, Right, it's going through a filter, some delay, right, it will sound like this, it's already being arpeggiated. Right, so now let's start with the first sequencer, which will control the gate length, among other things, right? So we have 16 steps, we can change the values, there are sliders, and you can see exactly the values of each step. Right, we can also change the length and starting point of this sequence, 
if I just drag here. Right, and I can drag this around. Right, now if two uh, steps or more are fully open, it will also keep the gate open, right? So if I have something like this, for example, Right, if a step is fully closed, it will not output a gate. Right, there is also sample and hold functionality. So if, for example, I turn here the... I bring in the release and I turn the sample and hold off. Right, and let's say that I turn three steps off. You can see we still have change in notes. Right, because the notes will change but the release of this voice is so long that we can still hear this change in notes. If I turn on sample and hold, there will be a change in note only together with active gates. So here the notes will not change. Right, so you can have a longer release and still keep the uh, sequence that you programmed. Right now there is also probability per step with these bars here. So for example, I can set here a few steps with probability. Sometimes they will play, sometimes not. Right, just like this. We have also cycles per step. So if I bring this back, and I set, for example, here the cycle to 2, it will play every other cycle. Right, and I can set this to 3, let's say, and 4, just to get a bit more variation. Right, let's say that this will be quite long. And you can see also the countdown here with these little bars. Right, now another very interesting feature is the step after up option. Let me maybe do something like this. Let's have, for example, four steps. Right, we have here the step after up. When this is active, instead of having one note per step, we get the full up per step, including probability, cycles, and so on. Right, so now it will play the full uh, arpeggiator for each of the steps, right? So again, I can set cycles, let's say here, and I can have a full cycle with shorter gates, maybe probability. So now let's have a look at the transposition sequencer. I have here palette as my voice and I'm using the chord key from impromptu just to generate a four note chord, right? It will sound like this. The harp sec is already arpeggiating it, right? And now we have the transpose sequencer, right? With it, we can transpose each step up or down by semitones. Right, and you can see exactly the semitones when you enter them. Right, something like this. Of course, we can also quantize this to a scale in the right-click menu. We have quantize output settings. I can set this to enable. For now, I will leave it at C and I will change this, of course, to minor. So now everything is also quantized to the C minor scale. Right, and I can go crazy. Right, this works really nicely when the length is different than the number of notes. Here we have four notes, right, a four note chord. So let's have something like, let's say, five steps. Right, and of course, also here we can apply probability and number of cycles, and they will control if the notes will be transposed or not. So if, for example, I have the first note here transposed by an octave, Right, but I want this to happen only every other cycle, right? So I just bring the cycle up to two. Right, I can add also probability. Right, and create something a bit more complex. 
Right, again, this is just a four node code. The code is static, it's not changing. The changes are coming from the transpose sequencer here on the ARP sec. Right, something, another thing uh, interesting, this will also be influenced by the step after ARP mode, right? So if again, let's say I initialize this, right, and I have, let's say, just three steps. If I go back to the gate sequence here, and I set this to step after up. Right now I can have, for example, one that is transposed by an octave, another one transposed. Right, the whole arpeggiator uh, will be transposed. And again, I can set this with cycles. Let's say also here. Right, and create something a bit more complex. And again, the codes are not changing, the changes are coming from the ARPSEC itself. Right now, this means that we don't even have to use a code at the input, we can use one note and sequence it fully from the ARPSEC. So I will mute this for a second, I have here another example. In this case, I will sequence, or this will sequence kick all from Befaco. And I have here the ADDR sequencer sending one note, right, three notes that are the same. And then one note, it is a bit higher. One note, not a chord, it's not a polyphonic signal. And now from the ARP sec, we can create something a bit more complex. Right, so if I go to the transpose, of course I have it already quantized to C minor. Right, let's have, let's say three steps. Now we can have something like this. Maybe set here a bit probability. Maybe have something longer with cycles. Right, so now, again, we have only one note coming from the ADDR, but the ARPSEC will transpose this note up and down. Right, and will create something a bit more complex. Let's have a look quickly at the two modulation sequences. Here I have chords coming from the Aeron static modules. Right, this is sequencing um, two FM operators as an FM voice. It will sound like this. Right, I already have a gate sequence programmed, a transposition sequence programmed. Right, and now we have two modulation sequences, mod one and mod two. Right, so I will use one of them to control, for example, the feedback amount on the FM operator. You know what, let's go also through the scope so we can see exactly what's going on. Right, also here we can change the starting point and the length. Right, so I can add some modulation. Right, something like this. I can set the exact range and polarity, right, so I can set where it will start from, the range of this uh, control voltage where it will end, and if it's unipolar, uh, unipolar or bipolar, right, I can add some slew to it, and you can see this on the scope, it will be a bit smoother. Right, I can use the second sequence, for example, to control the FM depth, right, and again, set a different length, and also here we have the probability and cycle. So let's say that I want here the first step to be fully open, but every other, every other cycle, and maybe here have two steps fully open, but with some probability. Right, so the probability and cycles will uh, control if the modulation goes out or not. Let me show you quickly the probability and cycle outputs. These outputs will output a gate whenever a parameter is active according to either the probability or the cycle controls. And let me show you what I mean by this. I have here the sequencer from Sively, right? It's outputting polyphonic pitch. The ARPSEC is arpeggiating these notes. And I have here a simple voice with two VCOs to sound like this. Right now, by default, the probability and cycle um, outputs are connected to the gate sequencer. So let's say that in the gate sequencer, I add probability on the last step, on the fourth step here. 
Alright, so now we will get a gate only when step number 4 is actually playing. We have probability set when the probability is active, so when this node is active, then we will get a gate out of the probability output. Now this gate you can use for many things. You can um, make sure other events happen at the same time. I like having the voice going to a delay at the same time when the note is actually playing. So what I have here, I have a copy of this voice going through a VCA. I have an envelope controlling this VCA, right? And this is going to a delay, which means that if I use this gate to open this envelope, only when the fourth note, when this note with probability is playing, we get a gate that will send this voice to a delay. Just like this. Right, so now only when the when step number four is playing according to the probability, we get a gate that sends this voice into a delay. Right now we can also connect the probability to the other sequencers, right? So for example, to the transpose. Let me bring this back here. Right, so let's say in the transpose sequence in the right-click menu, probability output setting, source. For now it's in the attached to the gate sequencer. We can attach this to the transpose sequencer. Right, and now if I add probability on step number four, which is transposed by an octave, according to the probability, this voice will be transposed by an octave and at the same time go also to the delay. Just like this, and this will work the same also with the cycles output. If I mute this for a second, right, I have here another voice. This is the FM operator again, uh, arpeggiated with the ARP sec. It will sound like this, right? And in this case, I'm using the cycle output to send it to a delay, right? This is connected to the transpose. I have here the first step transposed by an octave, but this will happen only after five cycles and only when it's tran uh, transposed, it will go also to the delay. Right, so again, you can make sure other events happen together with the probability and cycle uh, settings that you have. You can connect them to the gate sequencer, to the transpose sequencer, or to one of the modulation sequences. Before I show you the node detector, I want to quickly show you the randomization options that are quite unique. Now what I'm doing here, as you can see, I'm sending a dummy cable to the pitch input. It's not polyphonic, it's not sending any pitch information, it's not sending any voltage. It's just a dummy cable that is sending nothing, right? Because I'm going to do all of the sequencing from the ARPSEC. This is also something you can experiment with. The voice itself here is dark energy, right? So for now it will sound like this. There is nothing going on. But let me show you the randomization options. Let's start with the transpose, right? In the right click menu, again, I'm going to set a scale or a key. Of course, C minor. Right, and now I can choose how many notes I want to randomize or to control. Let's say five steps, and let's say I want this to start here. Right, if I right click this space here, I can do all sorts of things. For example, randomize. Right, and then we get a sequence, and I can do this again and again. If I hold control, this menu will not close also. Right now I can shift the notes left and right, and I can do this also if I shift, drag this. I hold shift on my keyboard, and I just drag. This will work for all the sequences, of course. Right, I can also reverse this. Maybe I will do, you know what, let's have a longer sequence here. Right, randomize this. Right, and now I can reverse. Right, I can flip it basically, I can shuffle it. Shuffle will mean basically it will take the values that are already there and it will just move them around. It will not create any new random values. Right, I can invert everything. I can sort it from lower to higher. Right, I can mirror this. Let's randomize this a few times and then mirror everything. Right, I can reset to defaults, of course. I can set this to zero. Right, I have undo and redo. So if I randomize this a few times, right, and let's say that now I shuffle this, I don't like the result, I can undo it. 
Right, and again, this will work on the other sequencers as well. So if here I have just three steps, I want to randomize them. Right, I have a modulation sequence that I want to randomize. Right here, another one. Let's say randomize. Now I can control also the range, of course. Right, add some slew to avoid these clicks. Right, and then I can, for example, sort this. Right, so you can experiment with all these options here in the right click menu, and of course this will work on all of the sequences. So now I want to show you the note detector, and please let me know if you want a full video about this module, because it might look simple, but it's very powerful. So basically this module will output a trigger only when a specific note is playing. This is a common technique to try with arpeggiators for generating unique rhythms. So here, as you can see, I'm using three of them with three different plats or macro oscillators. You can see that I have on each a different note selected. I have here C, I have D, and I have E, and I have the octave all the way down on all three of them, so it will detect the notes regardless of the octave they are in, right? I can change this to, let's say, D4, D5, D7, and so on, but again, if I take it all the way down, it will select the note D regardless of the octave. So first of all, I will use the gates from the ARPSEC, in this case, to clock the note detectors, Right, and now I can start using the pitch information, right, so this will be every time the note C is playing. Right, this will be the note D. And the note E, I believe the note E is still not playing for now. But we can start making some changes, for example, with the transpose sequence here, right, so if I change this, let's say, to something like this, and I randomize it a few times. Right, so now we start getting a rhythm. Right, something like this. Again, each note will trigger a different voice. Right, also here we can add probability and cycles. So let's say I want this one to happen every second cycle and this one with probability. Right, also if the incoming notes change, if the chords change, also the rhythm will change because then different notes will play. So in this case, I'm using the note sequencer to generate chords. I have it for now just on one step. But if I go, let's say, to four steps, we have four different chords. So we get a bit more variation. Right, so you again, you can use the note detector. You can use it also with other sequencers, of course. Um, but with the ARPSEC, this is how it will work, right? And you can use it to trigger other voices, to trigger percussion, to trigger drums, and so on, according to the notes it will play. I have here a steady rhythm here with a kick and a snare, just to put this in context. Right here I have a bass with a Euclidean sequencer. And I have here also an arpeggiator with a chord key generating one chord that's not changing. All of the changes are coming from the ARPSEC. Right, and that's it. I hope you will go and explore these two modules. I'm really happy with both of them. I think they are an amazing addition to the library. Thank you again, Vox Glitch, for doing this with me. Cheers.